Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Court Farm. Well, we're well into January now. And of course, it's the middle of winter. So far we've been pretty lucky with the weather, but we do believe there's some snow in the future, in the next month or so. Just get out and have a look and see how our goats are doing. Still got plenty of food at the moment, so don't think we need to worry about that. There's no contracts available at this month. Uh, goats are it's about almost halfway through their pregnancy, so we'll need to. Well, we have put in application already to the local town council to add a new barn for them because we'll have to separate them off their mothers. A couple of weeks after they're born so that we can get decent milk production but I think for now let's get the milk collected and delivered to the top holding tank so we can get our money it's all about co collecting money at this time of the year we don't have any contracts so pretty much our income from the milk is all the income we have and because we still so new and our flock is still pretty small it's not a huge amount of income sort of varying about two to three thousand pounds a month but um, yeah better than nothing I suppose but it's not good to allow us to survive we're still going to need the contracts for a little while longer in any case let's get this up to the holding tank the good thing of course about our, our system with the with the dairy is that it um, it pays us as soon as we deliver to the to the holding tank the joys of modern technology it's got a uh, a connection directly through to the offices as soon as it's as soon as the milk is delivered, it registers with them and automatically generates a transfer to our account. There is, of course, I think I mentioned it last time, the slight risk that if the milk is not up to their standards that they will reverse the transaction. But um, with these new holding tanks that we got, um, I'm, pr I'm pretty confident that we should be okay. Right, so let's get this delivered. Yeah, not too bad. We can live with that. Keeps us in a little bit of cash flow as such. Right, we'll get this back down to the the delivery area. Just going to park it off. Really need to sort that out. I'll work on that as well in the next little while. Let's park this here. Hello, Ben, yeah? Hello, Ben. James here from the planning office. Hello, James. How are you? Very well, thank you. I just thought I would give you a call about your planning application for the new goat pen. Ah, yes. I've been waiting for that with bated breath. Hope it's good news. Indeed it is. The application has been approved as submitted. I have popped the official notification in the mail to you. Oh, fantastic. Really pleased with that. My wife will also be very pleased with that, seeing as I've done it. <laughs> I 
the right way this time. Thank you so much. No problem. Goodbye. Goodbye, James, and thanks again. Well, well, well. There we go. So we have approval for our new goat pen. And we'll get working on that. I had uh, got a lot of the stuff together beforehand in anticipation. Well, when I had chats with James, he kind of indicated that it should be all right, but you know what happened the last time. And uh, yeah, Beryl will be very pleased that I've done it correctly this time. So we'll get started on that. And yeah, so we're going to be putting in quite a big pen. And once the kids have been born, we'll move them into the new pen. Um, the new pen will, is, um, is rated for 250 goats. So we've got plenty of room for expansion there. And this is the field that we're going to use. We do have to, in one of the prerequisites of the of the planning application was that it did have to have a holding tank for milk just so that we had enough space should we be milking 250 plus 65 goats, so over 300 goats so we did have to put another um, holding tank in, milk holding tank in which I'm quite happy about, I have no problem with that so we're going to try and get it in down the side here. If my measurements are correct, it should fit in just about. And still have room for us to add a shed on the end so that the goats have some sort of shelter. And there's enough room to move around. So the area in the front I'm going to leave pretty much open for now, for manoeuvring of vehicles, etc. I think if we do any further expansion we'll have to get some more land. But this should keep us going for a fair amount of time, actually. Yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Enough room for vehicles to tra travel in between the two, the two barns, or the two fields, should I say, or pens. And we'll now put in a bit of shelter at the end of the of this pen. The goats do need a bit of shelter. So this pen didn't come with normal shelter, so we'll have to build something in. It will still show the orange fence um, in the actual shed, but one will just have to use their imagination on that score. <laughs> but I'd rather have a nod to the fact that we do need to have some sort of shelter for goats. Goats do not like too much weather. They would prefer to have a bit of shelter when it rains or snows. They'll still go out, you know, once the sunshine is in, but yeah, they do like their, their shelter. That's milking goats, of course. You know, we're not talking about mountain goats who live on the side of the mountain, which are as rugged as can be, far removed from the milking breeds that I have. <laughs> Any event, let's just get the shed up. It'll give them some sort of shelter. It'll be a couple of months before we need to use the shelter, but rather get it up and ready now that we've got some time before we get started on some more contracts. We're still going to have to do contracts for probably the next year or so as we build up our, our goat herd into a 
sustainable to a sustainable size by sustainable I mean sustaining ourselves <laughs> um, yeah we've got plenty of feed at the moment for the size of the herd I actually have been coming under a bit of pressure from the different places to sell the extra feed that we've got but I think I'll hold on to it we're always very reluctant I think most farmers are reluctant to sell feed they need to have a really really oversupply or a very 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 good price um, the price is reasonable but um, I still feel at this point in time I'd rather keep a good supply of of feed of hay for the for the goats I'd rather have too much than too little if we've still got at the end of the next season um, from the season then we'll sell those on just because by then we should have some fresh stock in well I suppose as soon as I've got some fresh stock in um, we'll uh, we'll play that by ear right I'm just going to gravel up the yard so that it's uh, it's a little bit easier to maneuver around once the luckily so far we haven't had too much bad weather but I know there's some snow on the way so um, I think I'll just put down some gravel and some make the the underfoot part of the of this yard a little bit more secure a little bit easier to drive on don't quite have enough uh, to put a, any asphalt or concrete down I'll, I'm pretty pretty happy with gravel at this point in time I'll just get that all sorted out yeah so we'll also have to in the near future must probably move our billy on I do like to change billies pretty much every season so that um, we have a bit of diversity in terms of uh, oh, what does one call it in terms of the uh, of the genetics of the um, of the herd we certainly don't want to be I mean it's not it's it's not a real problem and I know some people do do it um, but I do like to um, not make not uh, put um, the the bullies of new of um, or the or the fathers of of, of, of the of the kids um, as sires for the next for the next uh, for the next breeding as such so just to keep that all in track I'd normally sell off our billy after the season I do leave them the billy with for a for a reasonable amount of time once he's finished doing his servicing just so that he can have a, a bit of a, a bit of recuperation and yeah just uh, fattening him up so, so to speak so that he's in prime condition for when he goes back to the market I do moving I do normally move them on at a fairly good price I'm not too fast at this point in time we don't have championship stock I just want good sturdy stock um, yeah I, I'm not in uh, I'm not at the, at, at the point where I can afford to buy champion sires just uh, 
we'll just be using normal normal sires normal police to uh, to grow our herd I suppose down the line we can start thinking about showing goats and that type of stuff but at this point in time just don't really have the time to do all that is involved in uh, in showing goats actually the, the person I normally get the police from um, their, their whole operation is about show goats so um, I do get my bill is off them but not the um, I don't buy his um, his championship stock we just buy his normal offspring fairly young stock must probably be in their second season of potential breeding and it, it does cost a bit of a premium so that when I do sell them on of course uh, even though I know where it comes from, but they're not pedigreed as such. We don't have pedigree papers from them. We just have normal movement orders. So it's probably the reason that we don't get the absolute top price for for a championship billy, even though it comes from championship stock. But yeah, no problem, just while I was waffling on there, just busy putting in some meadows on the banks just to make sure that it doesn't collapse, binds the banking. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this now, that's a pretty good use of our time in January when there's not much happening. Yeah, that's looking good. I like it. We'll send some pictures on up to Beryl. So Beryl should be uh, in a couple of months. And we've just got, I think it's just February. That she'll be, well, the rest of this month in February that she'll be on the old farm and then she'll be down here. She's actually sent Max down, so I've got to build a kennel for Max. I think we'll uh, build it just to the side of the house in the front so that I can remember to feed him. <laughs> uh, it sounds bad. I always do feed him, but we'll, we can feed him when we come in from work every evening. I don't want it right in the front. I think we'll move it to the side, to the left hand side, just as we go around the corner there. It's probably the best place for him. And then he can obviously have access all around the farm. Just got to remember to keep the gate closed so he doesn't wander too far out. Far out. But he's pretty good. He, know, he knows where his home is. That's where the food is. There we go. And there's Max. Strolling around. The next thing I want to put in is I want to put in little area for us to do servicing of our vehicles. The Land Rover is in dire need of a service. Let's go and see if we can see. I don't know, he's wandered off already, Max. <laughs> he's, he's a bit of a wanderer. Where is he? There he is. Hello, boy. Welcome. Been exploring, I suppose. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I do like it. Thank you. Uh, we'll put the... Uh, sort of little servicing area next to the cleaning area here. We'll utilise that area as a sort of service station for our vehicles. As we get more vehicles, we've got the tractor and we've got the we've got the Land Rover at the moment. 
and as soon as we get some land to work on we're going to have to get some implements so that should hopefully start happening in the next the next year or so got my eye on a couple of pieces of land so the basically the two pieces of land that uh, that butt onto the onto the yard area, the goat yard area or the two pieces of land that I'm looking at well I think that's pretty much where we're going to end this episode we're just going to get this vehicle serviced it's probably going to cost us a bit but yeah if you can see it desperately needs a bit of a service hasn't had a service since we've been down here so been so intent on spending money on other things we've got our toolbox down there so we can do the servicing ourselves uh, just over 3000 but it's done fully serviced vehicle now Won't worry about painting it because it's just going to scratch up again. I kind of like the rugged look of the Land Rover. <laughs> there we go. Well, yep, so that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next episode. Cheerio!